Hello, everybody. My name is Carl, and today I'll be talking about Mega Man 11. And today is a special review because while I'm naming it a retrospective review for consistency's sake, I actually finished it yesterday. I started a week before, um, got a decent way through it, and then I finished it yesterday. So this is fresh in my mind. Um, so it's less of a retrospective and more of a an actual just normal review. Look at that. So in any case, without further ado, Mega Man 11 was developed and published by Capcom for the Switch and other systems on October 2nd, 2018, and it'll run you $29.99. It was rated E10 Plus for cartoon violence, and it is the 11th game in the main vi Mega Man video game series, and the first one to release in eight years. I believe uh, Mega Man 10 released in 2010, so, you know, kind of a big deal. Overall, uh, it follows Mega Man once again. Uh, he needs to stop Dr. Wily and his nefarious plans, and along the way, the eight robot masters that Dr. Wily has uh, us, uh, uh, recruited to his cause. Um, this time, Wily has recalled, recalled his old research from his college days into the double gear system, which he uses to upgrade his robot masters, um, and it pushes them beyond their normal limits as a robot. Um, so Mega Man himself needs to be upgraded with the double gear, and so he goes out to fight fire with fire and stop Dr. Wily. So, of course, if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you know that I like Mega Man games quite a lot. Um, they've been a big part of my childhood. I've uh, reviewed Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 and Mega Man X Legacy Collection 1 and 2, and in the future I will probably uh, review Mega Man ZX uh, Legacy Collection, or whatever it's called. Um, so yeah, when they announced that a mainline Mega Man game was coming out after eight years, I was, I was so on board. Um, I, I bought it, I played through most of it, and then I got frustrated and left it for a few years. So, obviously I'm gonna bring that up later, but... Uh, I, I, I played it again on stream, um, as I put it on the Carl's Choice uh, section of my Discord, and my viewers voted for me to play it on stream, so I did, took me seven and a half hours, I beat it all on stream, and now you get to hear my opinions of it. So, gameplay. Um, you can play in multiple difficulties, I believe there was a, an easy mode, a normal mode, and a superhero mode. I played on normal mode. Like I said, I didn't beat it the first time on normal mode, so I figured I'd, I'd leave it on normal for now. So I should be giving you the default um, experience here. So, yeah, the, this game, it sticks to that tried-and-true formula. Run and gun, you can slide, you can charge up your buster, shoot enemies, beat, kill enemies, get to the boss, beat the boss, steal the boss's weapon, use that boss's weapon to beat the other bosses. Uh, beat all eight, beat a few stages, beat Dr. Wily, win the game. But there are a few new gimmicks introduced into this game that have not, uh, to my knowledge, appeared in other mainline series. Um, for one, the biggest gimmick is the double gear system. So now if you press the, the L button while you're playing, um, you will initiate power gear, which makes it so that your power shots and your regular shots are much more powerful. And if you press the R button, it will initiate speed gear in which time slows down so you can uh, more easily like dodge attacks and stuff like that. And what this does is it fills up like an overheating meter. And if the overheat meter fills up all the way, then um, the, the double gear system has to cool down before you can use it again. Um, if you're low on health, you can, you can use the double gear um, power up, which initiates both gears at once, but when that overheats, you're left severely, severely uh, limited. Your, your Mega Buster is basically burnt out. Um, so if you don't beat the boss while you're in, in the full power mode, um, you're basically hosed. It, 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 that's what it comes down to. So that's that's kind of interesting. I mean, I I like this this concept, this change on paper, but not so much in practice. Um, the thing is, from what I gather and from what I what I'm getting from how the game is designed, given that enemies drop like double gear, like recharge items, the game wants you to use the 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 double gear system a lot more than 
you probably actually will. Like, I feel like if I if I had more practice to make, like, using the double gear system properly and incorporating it into my gameplay, it, it would make the gameplay deeper and make the game more interesting. But the thing is, the only time I used the gear system was, like, fighting a boss and, like, premeditated going in and be like, okay, when they use this power, I'm going to use the speed gear. You know, and, and when they when they do this, I'm going to use power gear so I can get more hits off. There wasn't really a lot of, like, flitting in and out of power gear and speed gear and, like, changing them up. It was more like, okay, I keep dying on this part, so maybe I'll utilize my, my gear system. So, like, eh, I usually just use typical Mega Man strategies to get through. Um, it also added an item shop, which might have been in past, you know, in, in later entries. I, I'm not entirely sure. Um, but, like, in between levels, you can use nuts and bolts that you found to buy um, some single-use items, like uh, free lives and energy refills and stuff like that. But you can also buy um, items that you can permanently equip, uh, like something that gives you a grip on icy floors so you don't slip as much, or something that uh, makes it so that you don't recoil as much when you take damage, or an item that makes it so you're, you're, you don't have to hold down the, the charge button um, to, to charge up your Mega Buster. Things like that. Um, I like those. That's a cool addition. I, I do like these little things, just kind of little quality of life changes that, um, you know, if you're having a, a problem with the game, they help you, like, guide you through. Um, and you could equip most of them at once, so you didn't have to pick and choose, which I thought was, like, an interesting choice. I like that. Um, unfortunately, I don't know how exactly they were unlocked, if it's just, like, progression or what, because I feel like half of the items that I could have unlocked weren't unlocked. Like, and I beat the game, so I don't know if you had to beat it on, like, superhero difficulty or beat something without dying or, like, what, but, like, I don't know. Like, I beat the game. Like, why would I go back and try to unlock the items because I've already beaten the game? The whole point of the items is to help you beat the game. I don't know. Anyway, um, another little change that I do like was that they implemented a quick switch system between um, the the different weapons you can get from the boss in the original game, you couldn't, like, there was no way to switch on the fly. You had to pause, scroll down, and select whatever item you want, or whatever weapon you want to change to. In past games, you use, you know, later games, you use the L and R button to switch through. But in this game, they incorporate, like, the right, the C stick, the right stick, into it. So, of course, on the stage select screen, you have kind of a 3x3 three three array, Mega Man's in the middle, and then all of the bosses are, you know, eight surrounding him. And so... If, what is it, if if Blast Man is on the top right, then you can move your control stick to the top right, and it will switch you to Blast Man, and you can click the stick again to switch back to Mega Man. So that was kind of cool, being able to switch um, into, like, different abilities on the fly. One of my biggest complaints of the Mega Man series in general is that you get all these cool weapons, but, like, you never use them out in the field you only use them on the bosses that they're super effective against so it's kind of cool even though that you can't like practically you still can't practically switch between and use them it is more convenient to switch between them you can just flick the stick in one direction instead of having to you know scroll through by pressing r a bunch of times or pause navigate down and press it you can still do that if you want to like make sure that you you have the right one but it's nice to have that option um but yeah, so all that stuff is fine. All the new stuff is cool. But that's all just like the nice little icing on top of the, the proverbial video game cake. When it comes down to it, a Mega Man game, it doesn't need to have a story. It doesn't need to have fancy graphics. It doesn't need to have any of that. It, it all comes down to the stage design. How are the platforming sections designed? Where are the enemies placed? How fun is it to navigate through these areas? All right. And unfortunately, you're going to hear that word a lot, most likely, this review. It was really a mixed bag for me. And, and, and the reason is you die a lot. And in Mega Man 11, dying really stinks. Because if you die, you go back to the last checkpoint, of course. But these levels are pretty long, and there's only about three checkpoints, I want to say. You know, obviously there's, 
there's the start. If you die in the first quarter, you got back to start. And then there's like a second checkpoint. Then there's maybe like a mini boss and a checkpoint after them. And then there's a checkpoint right before the boss. And if you get a game over, which happens when you die when you have zero lives, you, you start with two lives, so you die three times, you get a game over. You have to start the entire stage over. And again, this is on normal mode. I don't know if easy mode like takes it easy, but you have to start the entire stage over. And if you do a little bit of math, there's eight Robot Master st stages, and there's 12 uh, total stages when you include the four Wily, st um, the four Wily Fortress stages. However, the the third to last or the third Wily stage is a boss rush rush. And the last stage is just basically um, the final boss battle, you know, and there's not much actual, like, um, stage to them. So if you don't count those two, there's 10 traditional levels in Mega Man 8, 11. There's 10 traditional levels. And if you get a game over at the end of the level, you're kicked out and you have to restart, which means that you have to redo 10% of the entire game, potentially, if you get a game over. And that's insane. But it's like, okay, Carl, like, how often is it you get a game over? Like, if you're good at the game, like, getting a game over should still be, like, really rare, right? Wrong. Unfortunately. It is really easy to get a game over. And before I get into the nitty-gritty of, of exactly why that is, get into the specifics of why it's easy to die, let's take a step back and we'll talk about game design. In general so the basic idea of a game you know like this you know in, in order in how to make a, a good game that that helps the player not feel frustrated and have fun and tackle challenges is you do this right you introduce the player to um, something they don't know about in a safe environment so they can see okay this is how this works and then you introduce them to another thing in a safe environment. And then you put those two things together and it makes a danger either in a dangerous environment or or it makes a dangerous environment and you let the player react. And if the player dies, well then it's on them because they knew well, how everything worked. But if you throw the player into a situation where all of a sudden they have to figure out okay, what's going on and then they're dead before they can figure out what the heck just happened, that's bad. Because the 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 player essentially didn't even have a chance to play the game, right? So, sometimes, this game does this really well. A good example is um, the the Wily Fortress Stage 1. At the very start, there are some gears turning, and there's a really big uh, wall you have to jump over. And you realize this, this each of the gears have a little knob sticking out that you can jump on. So the gears themselves, they're turning, and so the gears turning tells you what direction that they're turning in, and if you stand on the knob, you know, it'll turn, and then you'll fall off if you stand on it for too long. But there's no abyss underneath you, it's safe. So you have to jump up two gears to get over the wall. So it kind of introduces you to the concept of, okay, these are the platforms, they're moving, if you stay on them too long, they'll roll you off, you'll, you'll fall off, you'll die. And then later, it has more gears, and it has enemies. So you already know what enemies are at this point. You know, don't touch them. You'll they'll get they'll hurt you, and you know what the gears do at this point. But now you have to you have to chain them together. You know that okay, they're, the enemies are going to be shooting at me while I jump on these gears. I gotta anticipate that. I gotta do that. That's good game design because yes, it might be hard to do these things, but the player understands what's going on. And if they die, they understand, okay, this is exactly why I died, and this is why it's my fault. You want the player to feel like when they die, it's their fault and not the game's fault. Because if they feel like it's the game's fault, they feel like they've been cheated, it's frustrating, and they're not going to have fun. But a lot of the time, unfortunately, the game does not do this in that same uh, stage. There is an area where there's two spikes, two walls with spikes going down them, and, and it's clear that you have to jump down in between um, these two spiky walls. So you jump down, it moves to the, to the next screen, and there are spikes right in the middle. So you have to drift over, but I, 
I swear it is not physically possible to see that and realize and react fast enough that you have to drift over and 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 not fall on the spikes. So what I do, I jumped up down in there, thought I was fine, thought that okay, I got to fall and then boom, died because I landed on the spikes. And I had no indication that that was going to happen. And the funny thing is, I did it two or three more times and I never died to it again because it was easy once I knew what to expect, but because I didn't know how to expect it, or didn't know what to expect, I died. And that's bad. And there's a lot of crap like that where in bounce man stage, you jump over this gap, enemy comes up, pushes you into the gap with no warning. And you're like, okay, well, that's awesome. So then you shoot the guy, and then you wait a little bit too long, and another one respawns and then pushes you into the gap again. You know, it's it's just crap like that where you're you're having a good time you're you're playing the game, you're doing the platforming, whatever. A something either you don't expect happens or a, you make a small mistake, you're dead. Right? So game overs happen a lot in this game. Rarely do you actually run out of HP in the actual platforming sections of the 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 game. Like, but you still die a lot. And the reason for this is because of all the one hit KO stuff. You miss a jump, oh, you fall into the fell into the void, you die, you're dead. Did you make the jump, but you got hit by a, a projectile so that you recoil backwards and then fall into the void again? You're dead. Did you mess up and accidentally graze a spike while dealing with novel underwater physics? You're dead. Even though you're made of uh, a robot, made of the super alloy serotanium, you're dead. You know, didn't matter that you were at full health, you're dead. And for some reason, despite how easy it is to die, free guys are really, really rare. There is one free life per every uh, for every stage, I believe. They're hard to get to, and once you get it, it never responds. Never. So once you get that uh, that that free life, and then you get a game over, that's it. It's gone. And I have no idea why they're so stingy with free lives. Like. Life systems in games, I think, are, like, on their way out. Like, it's not often that you see a new game come out where you have the whole life system and lose all your lives and get a game over. Um, and if you do, it's usually not consequential. You can usually get enough lives to never get a game over. So I have no clue why they're so stingy with with lives in this game. I just, I just don't. You know, you could buy some from the shop if you really want to, but, like, why spend your money on things that you're going to lose really quickly when you can buy like save up and buy um like capital goods that you can equip once and that never break right um and then the last thing that you, that's uh, frustrating about the whole life situation is that you don't refuel your weapon energy between lives so because each boss has a certain weapon when you show up to to fight that boss or it, um you want to bring the weapon that they're weak to but if you take the fight to them and you use the weapon and you use it all up and then you die and you respawn right before the boss fight, unless you had bought a weapons energy tank, you're SOL. Like you got to fight this guy with your buster, which you're probably not used to and you probably won't do and you probably won't succeed at until you get a game over and then you're restarting the whole level again. You know, and it's so hard to get practice in because you get a game over and you have to restart the whole level, you know, and that's 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 a lot. That is that is a lot of my frustration with this game is that so much of your progress is is taken away from you when you die, you know, and and overall, the reason why I quit this game the first time I got through all eight bosses, I got through that and then I. Um, got to Wily Fortress 1, and I remember there's a really hard uh, uh, platforming section, and I got past it, and I was like, okay, phew, got past it. And then there was an even harder one, like, soon after, and I died in that one. I'm like, okay, whatever. And I respawned before the first hard one. And then I went through it. I got a game over. I went to the beginning of the uh, uh, the level, and I said, I'm done. You know? I don't, like, I already did that section. I already proved myself. I don't want to do it again. And I stopped, you know, and there was a couple times during my stream where I had to set the controller down, you know, take a deep breath, do a little like be right back, take a walk around the house, 
you know, because I was so frustrated that dying meant like one little mistake could cause you to die and just lose all your progress, you know? So this, this game could have been like, there's so much good stuff in this game. It's so frustrating. It could have been improved immensely by just removing the bogus, like surprise, you're dead sections. Um, making the checkpoints more frequent, maybe, and making free lives more common. The whole game, I only found one free guy, right? So, like, there's just, I, I, sorry, there's a lot of good design in this game, but it's like sitting in a suit full, like a suit of bad design. It's like a really good soup in a really gross dish. You know, you're like, okay, the soup is good, but there's a lot of crap floating around in here because this dish was not washed before you served it to me. I don't know if that makes any sense, but whatever. Um, but yeah, onto the boss fights themselves, they're not they're not bad. I do I do did enjoy them. They they're not like impossible to do, especially like the robot masters. Um, they're not horrible on their own. Um, it, you know, usually if you have the, the weapon that's effective against them and you have some plan of like how you want to use your double gear, they usually go down pretty quickly as long as you don't panic. Um, there is one, uh, enemy that I, that if you, if you know, you know, if you, it was in Wily stage one. And if you've played, uh, Mega Man games before, you know how bad you probably know which one I'm talking about, but that one, I just slam two uh energy tanks just to brute force it because I really didn't feel like dying multiple times, getting a game over and then doing the entirety of Wily Stage One again. So I just kind of brute forced it. And if you really want to, you can buy a bunch of energy tanks and brute force every fight. You know, but you should be if you have a, a decent grip on Mega Man, you should still be good, um, overall. But gameplay rounded out onto the story. So there's more story than your usual Mega Man game here, which honestly does not still doesn't mean much. Um, there is a prologue like that 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 plays on the main screen, and that prologue is that um, Doctor Wily and Doctor Light back when they were in college they used to be friends, um, but their relationship was slowly deteriorating, and the last straw was that they were both competing for funding to to fund their research projects, <clears throat> and so they're in a world. This was like in in. Uh, the time when uh, robots were first being made to help humanity and Dr. Wily wanted to, to fund his double gear system, which would allow the robots to push past their limits, which doesn't really make sense. Like you can just in install a couple of gears. Like you'd think like you could just install hydraulics or something or make, make the robots tougher in general. So they wouldn't have to. Anyway, I'm, I'm digging too much into it. And then Dr. Light wanted to research, uh, intelligence so that they could live um with humans um as equals right and guess what the funding went to dr light so dr wiley said you're all stupid threw down his prototype double gear and stormed off and that was like the last time they ever spoke or whatever so that's revealed to be um a flashback within a nightmare it actually happened to dr wiley and he goes wait a minute that reminds me double gear that's one way I can I can use to be evil. Um, so he flies into Dr. Light's lab where he's um, fixing up eight robot masters, steals them, reprograms them to be to do his bidding, and then programs a, a, either a speed gear or a power gear in each of them. And Mega Man's got to, you know, beat them, got to blow them up. Super fighting robot. So the obvious question is like, okay, why is he doing this? Does he want robot domination or world domination? I don't know. Don't really care. Like, why is whatever his goal is? Why is his um like methods stealing robots and and then just having them chill in their own base while Mega Man goes by and methodically like blows every one of them up? I don't know. I don't care. I just want to have fun. Carl's just want to have fun anyway but yeah so i don't give a crap at the story doesn't really bother me that it's crappy and bare bones um also everything's voice acted too everything's fully voice acted which is kind of weird voice actors are fine but like i'm used to, to Mega Man kind of being the silent, silent protagonist i don't really like how much how talkative he's gotten in, in past uh in the later games um i kind of like the smash bros um 
uh, iteration of him where he doesn't really talk at all. Um, but, you know, that's kind of me. It's kind of cringy. They got some cringy voice lines. Um, every every boss gives a cringy voice line um, at the start. That's probably usually some pun off of whatever they have. But, yeah, Blastman says, I got a short fuse for you or something like that. I don't know. Oh, well. Graphics and art style. So, yeah, uh, I think this is the first Mega Man game to have 3D HD graphics, maybe. I want to say all the recent, like, there hasn't been a recent Mega Man game, like, in any form for a while now, I want to say. I don't know what the last one was. Like, not a Mega Man X, not a um, Mega Man Legends, nothing. So I think this is the first one that has HD graphics. They're okay. Okay. The, they, they, I do like the look of all of the different, um, like all eight Robot Masters hideouts. They all look very distinctive. They all have their own style. The backgrounds are hand drawn. They look great. Um, the, the, the hitboxes match up pretty well. I never had a hitbox problem with the 3D graphics. They've got like the cell shaded kind of like cartoony block lines around them so they're all right i don't really have a problem with them uh didn't love them whatever uh yeah also all of the cutscenes are not animated they are just still images of what's going on with voice underneath there are a few like animated like 3d cutscenes um that are like really minimal of like characters just running in and running out like it's not like you know, camera panning and whatnot. So, yes, yeah, fine. Music-wise, I say this, uh, like, every time, and I'll say it again, I'm not much of a new music guy. I did not dislike the music. Uh, I thought it did what it needed to do. Uh, I really have a spot, soft spot for 8-bit music, though, truth be told. So I'm kind of sad that it didn't have 8-bit music, but it might have clashed. I understand why they didn't do it. Um... But DLC, I did not know there was DLC for this game, truth be told. I was, like, just looking it up on, on Nintendo's website so that I could get a, um, like, info on it. And apparently, you can download, I guess, piano instrumental versions of the background music for each of the eight Robot Masters. I listened to it as I was writing this review, and they were pretty good. I don't, I would be interested to see how, like, thematically appropriate they they were or they are like when you actually hear them in each stage but by themselves they were pretty good i am a sucker for orchestral stuff so um i liked it you know kind of wish i was i was uh doing that on stream playing those but yeah uh with that on to my recommendation my rating overall as much as i have a soft spot for the mega man series I, I really, in good conscience, can only give this game a five, which it it feels bad because like there's so much good stuff in this game. There are just like points where like in the game where it doesn't matter how like skilled you are at the game. Like if you're going in blind, you're gonna die, and that'd be fine if the death if the penalty for death wasn't so harsh. Um, and because of how harsh it is, it really drags the game down. I mean, there's a reason why I put this down and didn't play it. There's a reason why I had to stream it in order to, for lack of a better word, force myself to get through it and finish it. Because there's just so much frustration that goes into this game, you know? And I, I feel like there's a, there's like a great game in here that just has like the whole death system as a ball and chain just dragging it down. Like if they fixed all of that, all the good stuff, I could like I could see it getting like a 7 or 8, but it just it just yeah, you know. Final the, the big nail in the coffin I think is the fact that I literally stopped playing it because it just was not fun for me anymore. But yeah. Um I feel like there's a really solid game in here somewhere, but like but for now as it is, the game's just fine. But yes, what do y'all think? Do you think I'm uh, being too harsh on Mega Man? Am I not being harsh enough? Uh, do you have any other thoughts, questions, comments, concerns? Feel free to drop them down in the comments section below. I read all my comments. And if that's that, 
Stay safe out there, citizens. And have a wonderful day. Bye.